right, this GoPro, man, <laughs> it locked up again. Anyway, you pull the battery out, you put it back in. If you guys have a GoPro Hero 7 Black, you probably know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I just got back from Kerry. It was so much fun cruising in the car with the windows open, my, my new long rock star hair blowing all around. Had a great time. Um, so <laughs> we did the online ordering of some food at Food Lion, as I showed you guys that in an earlier video. They gave us a piece of meat. It was like a chuck roast or something. So um, we're going to use the smoker. Be strong. Be strong. I watched a video and I want to do a shout out to Malcolm. He has a channel called How to Barbecue Right. Now there's a lot of guys out there that are like so-called smoker barbecue experts. This is the guy. Um, he's really, really good. You gotta watch him. Um, anyway, uh, so here's my little crappy smoker, but you know, it works really good. It's a, it's a hybrid. It's a gas smoker that you can use with char charcoal heat or gas and I prefer gas because I can regulate the temperature really good I put a little bit of charcoal in there so I can use less gas so I can run this thing like almost all the way closed on the um, on the thermostat here but uh, just to show you you know I've got several shelves I'm just gonna put one in because I just got one piece of meat uh, now one thing that you might not know about this smoker and I'm gonna show you here so it gives you this basket down the bottom, you know, you put your coals and stuff in there. But if I put the hickory right on the bottom, it burns up too fast. Everything just goes too quick. I found uh, somebody did a thread and he said, he put a skillet in there and it just smokes a lot better. So if you get one of these, put the skillet in there and put the hickory wood in there. So I'm getting some really strong smoke right now. I usually let it settle down a little bit before I put the meat in there. Probably takes about... 15, uh, 15, 20 minutes or so. Um, so anyway, let me, and this thing needs to be cleaned. Oh, it's hot. Already. Um, and this is a water smoker. And I love having a water smoker. Sometimes you put like apple juice and stuff in here and sliced apples. Now, when you close this thing, you gotta like lift up on it. Now the thing is hot though, so I'm gonna grab a piece of newspaper or something. Gonna lift up just a little bit. Yeah, so I'm gonna get this guy up to temperature. That brisket, I think I'll, uh, it's not a brisket. It's like a baby brother biscuit, brisket. Baby brother, baby biscuit, brisket, <laughs> rubber baby buggy bumper. Um, <laughs> baby brisket is what they call it, this beef chuck. So uh, I think I go at around 225. You know, and you can vary a little bit. It's just going to change your time. Um, some people really put a heavy bark on it. I'm not, I'm not going to go that much, that heavy on it. And when I run smoke, I go a little bit easy on the smoke too. I like the smoke. So that when I pull it out, it's going to have like a toast color. I don't like that black color. Um, some stuff, I like the ends of ribs, you know, the burnt ends. I'm okay with that, but uh, anyway. Well, you'll see. Anyway, so uh, yeah, let me let this go. Get the meat out. I'm going to put some, basically on uh, beef, I just use like a salt and pepper. Be honest with you, Montreal steak seasoning is what I put on there. And then I put a little bit of smoked paprika. I'm going to let this thing go for about four, three and a half hours. And then I'm going to uh, wrap it in tin foil with a little bit of uh, um, apple, uh, apple juice. And I can't remember what was in there. I did it before with the ribs. Uh, some butter, parsley, garlic, onion, salt, pepper. 
Uh, anyway, it's on my other video. I got to remember. I got to look it up. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that goes in there with the uh, with, you know when you wrap it up, and uh, it'll come out super good in about maybe about another hour. You know, I thought that when you wrap something in tin foil and you put it in the smoker, I thought that it lowers the temperature. It actually makes it go hotter, um, and it makes it real tender. And then some people they take it back out of the tin foil and then they put it like on the grill or whatever to crispen it up. I don't think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna be hungry. So this is gonna take close to four and a half hours. They say five hours. Look at that piece of flint here from my, <laughs> from my seat of my car. Uh, they say five, maybe you could go, some people go like eight, nine, eight hours. That's crazy. I don't want it to be dried out. So I'm gonna go, but I'd rather have a little bit more chewy and I don't know, we'll see. I'm gonna go about five hours, I think. So uh, catch you in a little bit. I'll show you uh, show, show you how things are going as we uh, progress. Vegetarian for you vegetarians, I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, there's that big hunk of meat um, with the uh, Montreal steak seasoning on it. Let's see my shadow in the picture. Let me move a little bit and a little bit of paprika. And uh, yeah, that's gonna be. It. I'll put a probe in there later. I think I don't know. I don't think it's really necessary. I could figure it out. But um. I'm gonna let this thing out. When's billowing smoke? I don't like it like that. Um, I'm still trying to get everything lit real good. I usually go a little higher temperature at first, then I start winding it back. And uh, on these smokers, if you haven't cleaned them in a while, watch that temperature. You get up over 250, you're gonna start a grease fire. Uh, you start a grease fire on this thing, your meat is done because it gets nasty. Anyway, uh, so yeah, there we go. Um, get this thing started and see you in a little bit. I never mentioned um, what what uh, smoker this is. So this is the Masterbuilt Sportsman Elite. I got this at um, one of those uh, outdoor places. I think it was Bass Pro Shops. And I think it was about uh, 175 bucks. It might have been on sale. It might have been 200 or something. And I got it for 175 but see, it's a gas smoker, right? and I'll, I got it all the way down low right now. But when you put charcoal in it, yeah, you're just gonna go real easy on the gas. But you can, you know, you can get that temperature exactly where you want it. A wood smoker, it either gets too high, too low, too smoky, not enough smoke. It's like uh, then, you know, you put more wood in it, and then it overshoots. Uh, yeah. I had a bullet smoker, like the cheapest ones you can get. Yeah, uh, smoke stuff it came out really good, but it was a real pain in the butt. Um, this thing is just so easy to use. Now the new ones are the pellet smokers, right? I mean, geez, they got an app on your phone and probes and everything else, and it regulates. This one there's no regulation. I have to like kind of adjust it. Sometimes it's a little hot. I got to come back, you know. So you got to check it every once in a while. But I, I mean, I can, I can do it, right? Um, so the pellet ones are all automated, so that's even better. But anyway. I can't wait, man. It's got five hours, and I'm hungry now, so I'm gonna get this thing started, and uh, it'll drop the temperature down a bit when I put the meat in there. But um, I gotta keep an eye on it at first. Once when things get going, after about the first 45 minutes, temperature will be pretty pretty stable. Let's go play, do something else. All right, see you in a little bit. Oh, and I want to ask you guys: Do you guys have a smoker? And if so, what smoker do you have, and do you like it? you have one of those pellet smokers is it worth the money uh, my co-worker's got one he absolutely loves his i don't know how often he uses it though and i'll be honest with you i was tempted to use the next grill to smoke this because some people do that but then it was that whole temperature adjustment thing and i didn't want i didn't want to deal with that so i'm just going to go with the tried and true i did the ribs the beef ribs in this thing and it came out good so why i do this the same way oh and malcolm and another guy said like if you want to get that uh smoke rim ring you have to uh put the meat in cold normally you bring the meat up to temperature when you put it in the smoker just put the meat in cold and you get the smoke ring so we'll see how that goes all right
I need to angle this smoker a little bit so the door stays closed instead of one stays open instead of wanting to stay closed all right let's clean this stuff mess up and uh, go grab a beer it's Friday by the way I took the day off from work so I picked a good day for it too might even want to fly the drone there's like no wind here I don't know if you guys saw that video where Sue and I went to the mountains and we picked up these shirts they call it the woolly worm festival Woolly worms, they're basically caterpillars, right? The ones with the brown and black uh, caterpillars. <laughs> and they, they have this wall and they, they, they have this string coming down the wall, right? So they have the string coming down. And uh, what you do is you buy the caterpillar, they, they sell them there. And you put your caterpillar, you know, on the string. And they say go, and the caterpillars go up the string. And, um, Whoever, whoever's caterpillar is the fastest or gets up to the, the top the quickest <laughs> wins a prize. I think you win a pretty good prize. It sounds so stupid, right? But I can tell you, this is in Banner Elk in North Carolina when they do this. And it became a huge thing. Traffic jam. I mean, big, huge festival. If you can get there, I recommend you try to find a place to stay in Banner Elk. Probably got to book it a year in advance. But oh my God, it's just packed. Now when we went, it was just a little bit of rain, but uh, so we didn't stop or get out of the car, but it was just, we were just passing through, but it was wild. We had to get the shirt. Um, if you've been to Banner Elk, let me know. I'm trying to get more interactivity with you guys as my viewers, so you know, I know you know how to how to content, what to give you guys. Um, and I gotta remember to speak up on this GoPro. It doesn't uh, carry my voice too good, so I apologize for that. But let me know if you've been to Banner Elk, been to western part of North Carolina, if you like it. Now, there's another thing I would love to go. Oh, Maggie Valley. Oh, they have like these car shows there. I just love that area. Joey's Pancake House. Oh man, I love that place. So uh, we were meaning to go there. I don't know, I wanna look it up. I don't know with the COVID and everything. I think. Things are going to lighten up, and I'd like to get out there, and it would be so much fun to go and visit one of those classic car shows. I don't even know if it, they already had it, you know, so I got to look at the calendar, and that's the thing about car meets. You know, you go to Facebook, there's different places to go. I don't know. It's hard to find one place to go that just shows all the meets, you know. Wouldn't be that hard to do. I used to do databases, but um, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Gotta go. If you've been there, let me know. All right, so I set my timer for three hours. At the end of that, I'm gonna wrap it. I have to set the timer because sometimes I forget when I started. I think I started around 12.30, so. Let's go, uh, let's go check and see what the temperature is, make sure everything's cool. All right, so that's pretty good. Had a ham sandwich. I was gonna have a beer, but I decided to have a San Pellegrino. Have you guys tried this stuff? This is really good pomegranate and orange uh, soda real sugar good stuff good stuff bought it uh, I think we bought it on Amazon or whatever had to had them deliver it a case of it so that's pretty good and the beer I drink um, is Stella I like Stella Artois that's my current flavor I mean if I'm having seafood though I like Sam Adams Anyway, uh, yeah, so this, I've got an issue with my dipole antenna. Some of the bands aren't working, but you know, I don't think I'm going to bother fixing it right now. I am going to take it down and take it with me because where I go, I might not be able to set up that tower with my antenna. The uh, two top antennas are for two meters, VHF, uh, 144 megahertz. Got a little UHF beam in there. That thing's a piece of junk. Um, and then the big antenna is the Mosley TA33. Got a, I got like the Mosley TA33 for like a hundred bucks from some old timer guy. And uh, 13B2s were on sale when I bought them. They're like twice the price now from when I had when I bought them. I think I bought them about 10, 15 years ago, 10 years ago, something like that. God, I forget. <laughs> but anyway, 
I'm gonna hire a guy with a crane to come down here and take that stuff. I don't fit in my uh, <laughs> I don't fit in my climbing belt anymore, and I, my wife don't want me climbing the tower anymore. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. I should have Doug if he wants my tower. Yeah, he, uh, he's the one that just bought that. I just went to his house and sold him my uh, station monitor. He's got a rusty tower like mine, but uh, he doesn't have many sections to it. I'm sure he would like a taller tower, but he's older than me, so I don't think he's going to want to climb or put that thing up either. So anyway, uh, yeah, temperature's holding rock solid, looking good. It's been a couple hours. I did put some more, um, I did put a little bit more wood in here. And when I turned it up, see, that's about how much smoke I get. Can you see it? That's how I like it. Just a little bit of smoke. If it's billowing smoke and it's like blue, that's that's no bueno. So let's take a look. I got um about another hour or so, and then I'm gonna wrap it. So let's just take a peek, see how it looks. I wonder if I should flip it. I don't know if I should flip it or not. Oh look at that. Mm -mm -mm. I'm gonna crank the temperature up just a little bit more. I think I'll run around. It was at around 225, it's running a little low right now, but I might run it up around 250, I think. But you see the color of it, it was, uh, it's not black. I don't like it black. So, turn that up a little bit. See, do you guys have these bees? Look at these suckers, man. Wood borers, they're putting holes in my deck. Look at that. See that hole? I get a hole right there. Oh. What do you do about wood borers, man? These suckers are terrible. I stuck a stick in there, and they go way in there. This one was when I, I sealed it. I filled it in. They pulled all the crap out. They pulled everything. They pulled everything out and I'm using it again. They look like bumblebees, but they get a shiny butt. And if you don't get them, they'll come back and it'll be worse next year. Anyway. All right. So, uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm going to get the, oh, I got the tongs right here. I'm going to flip this thing over. I don't know how over. this camera angle will go. I want a siren. I don't know what's going on there. It's pretty good. Dripping. You see that? I don't, I don't have a lot of smell like I do with the, with the ribs. I can smell it really good. But, uh, yeah. All right, so far so good. All right, so I got my probe out here. I'm going to get ready to hook this thing up. I guess it goes on this side. Yeah. I like this one. It's, um, it's wireless. So you just carry this thing with you. And you know, this is one of those things you probably should have read the instructions when you got it. Because I don't... I don't remember a lot about this thing. A little flashlight on it. But you know, the batteries like, are dead or something. I don't know why. I haven't used it in a while. It's like I don't know how to shut it off. So I should just leave the batteries out. I don't know how to turn it off. Um, yeah. You think you just press and hold the off button. Oh yeah, look at that. Corroded. No problemo. Okay, so let's change some batteries. Alright, I changed both batteries. I was no, I knew how to turn this one off. It was this one I wasn't sure about. So this one you press and hold it. But I think it gets hit in the drawer. But this one's got a little button here. And you see a flash every once in a while, right? flash well now it's not gonna flash oh there it goes okay now how do I turn it off I'm gonna press and hold there's no beep or anything but that's how I did the other one I mean, pressed and held let's see if this flash comes back
Okay. Look at my little vampire girl. If I don't pet her, she's gonna just rub against me and she's gonna pet herself. Okay, let's see. Press and hold. I don't know. Oh, there it goes, okay. What is up with you, boo? You think you're gonna get some barbecue? Is that what it is? You want some barbecue? All right, so it's cool though, it's wireless. So I'm gonna select meat. Uh, okay, beef. Ground beef. Beef. Okay, there it is. Uh, see, I can put a timer on here. I get a taste. Medium well, and it tells me the temperature is gonna be 165, 140, 150. You know, I don't even know what temperature I wanted at. Huh. I gotta do a little research. I forget what temperature it's supposed to go. Cause I usually just go by time. I don't even, I just set the temperature on the unit and I don't worry about anything. But some of the guys were using this as a probe to see what, oh, I'm trying to remember what temperature they had the thing at. Maybe I should edit this out cause I just don't remember, nor do I care. If I go four hours, I really don't care what this thing says. I know, right? Should be fine. So let's turn that off. I think I turned it off. That's what I don't like about these ones that don't have any kind of beep or something. You don't know if you turned it off or not. Okie dokie. So, um, yeah, another hour to go. Then I wrap it and then I cook it for another hour and then I gotta let it rest. All right, it's time to wrap it. See, that's the color I like, just like that. And uh, my water ran out, so the temperature started climbing. So it was a good thing I came out here. That water actually regulates the temperature down. So I'm gonna put it down in here and I'm gonna put some of my mixture in there and then cover it up. All right, got it. Not too much in there. I wish I had a little bit more, but Two layers of tin foil, cover this up, and then wrap it up and put it back in for another hour. All right, so I got it in there. And I'm gonna try and run it around 250. You'll remember it gets hotter in the foil. So I'll run it for about an hour. So it's uh, almost four o'clock. So, uh, yeah, I might go uh, half an hour. I might go to about 4.30 because I have to do the potatoes and all that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cook that. Uh, I don't know. I might do it separately. It's supposed to go together. So I, I, this is my dilemma. I don't have a pan that's big enough to go in here that's not too big. So I think what I'm going to do is let it go like this for a while half an hour and then I'm gonna move it over into this other pan which is basically a regular pot roast pan put the potatoes and carrots and all that stuff in there with it and hopefully it'll come out good <laughs> all right see ya all right do as I say not as I do I made the mistake of adding more wood chips to it I've got it covered there's no sense to that at all when you wrap it then yeah no more smoke there's no point to it because it's not going to get through the metal. Um, yeah, so I told Alexa to remind me in 30 minutes. Normally we'll go an hour. But what I think I'm going to do is take this out in 30 minutes. Put it in another pan. Put it in the oven with the potatoes, carrots, and that sort of thing. And finish up the, uh, the stew. All right. So hopefully it'll come out all right. We'll let you know. <laughs> Better anyway. They said it's... Uh, 90% tenderness, 10% temperature. So let's just see where we're at. And what what he said was it should feel like pushing through peanut butter. So 
So <clears throat> it's tender, but it could go just a little bit more. Um, so this thing's been going since I think about 12, 15. My wife just flipped, is going to flip the vegetables over. So they're going to be ready soon. I wish this was done because then I could take this out and let it rest. Let it rest. That's crazy. You know, you, this stuff smells so good. You want to just eat it right away. And okay, whatever. <laughs> it's, it's your cooking. But this is great. Oh, my God. If you could smell it right now, it smells so good here. So, uh, yeah, almost done. So I'm really, uh, really stoked. Highly recommend a smoker. You guys would love this thing. And notice I haven't even come out here and test, uh, touched anything. It's holding the temperature really nice. So, you know, between, it depends on how you're doing it. Between 225, 250 is the way I like to do it. But some people go a little hotter. I find that when I go a little hotter, I just end up um, using a lot more water out of the smoker. Because the water kind of regulates it. It wants to, wants to hang out around 250. All right, see okay you. guys so uh done here so it is now 5 30 so about five hours you can do it different ways uh slower faster i'm gonna open this up so it, can, it doesn't keep cooking in here there she is it's pretty good Probably should have trimmed it up a little bit more. I didn't realize that was a lot of fat right there. But I'm not an expert at this. That's why you got to watch Malcolm. <laughs> or Mr. Sue. They'll teach you some... Oh, well, my cat says it's good. Is it good? Does it smell good? Okay. You know he wants some, right? So if we go shopping and I bring home a rotisserie chicken. Oh, yeah. He's all about that. That is Teddy right there. Wanna say hi to YouTubers? Yeah. All right. All right, catch you guys later. Have a good one. Like, subscribe, thumbs up. Stay safe. All right, As you can see the smoke ring. It's not very smoky. I didn't go uh, very heavy on the smoke. Probably could have gone a little more on that and I could have gone a little bit more on the, on the salt. But um, all in all, pretty good.